as we take a check on the uh, two teams, starting with Clare, and the banner are making one change from their last game, the quarter-final victory over Wexford. Andrew Quinn replaces Barry Nugent at top of the right. It means that 13 of the 15 that started the championship in June are still very much key men. David Hoy, who missed the Tipperary game, is now back at right half in a reunion of the 2002 All-Ireland final half-back line. Brian O'Connell and Colin Lynch are in midfield for a fourth game together, while centre-forward Tony Carmody is enjoying a very good spell on the 40. Well, not unexpectedly, Cork selectors make no changes from the team that uh, started the last two matches. Indeed, Pat Mulcahy for Wayne Sherlock is the only change from last year's All-Ireland winning combination. Dermot O'Sullivan starts his 30th championship game, while in the half-forward line, Niall McCarthy and Timmy McCarthy continue to enjoy management confidence in spite of being withdrawn during the second half with Waterford. So the ingredients are there for what should be a stirring contest, and we'll be back with you very shortly. Well, one of the byproducts of uh, teams doing well at the All-Ireland Series is certainly a backlog of matches at club level in the competing counties. It tends to be a perennial problem, irrespective of who's in the semi-final and who's in the final. But on the plus side, I guess, the game of hurling has to get a major boost when school children can come here like they are today in representing and supporting the successful counties. They can come here, they can watch the Davy Fitzes and the Sean Ogo Halpines, their heroes, and then set out, of course, to emulate their feats. And in that respect, I know that clubs in Clare and Cork today have made a big effort to bring juvenile members along to Grove Park, be they from Six Mile Bridge or Sarsfields, Crusheen or Cove. And that's the kind of marketing which uh, the game needs, I'm sure you'd agree. And full marks to the mentors who look after the safety of the young charges for a full day out. No easy task. And uh, don't, uh, of course, the uh, mentors, of course, don't get a chance to sit in the corporate boxes or in the uh, premium seats. Theirs is very much a labour of love. So well done to all of them. Alongside me, Tomas Mulcahy, your thoughts? Well, it's going to be very interesting, Gerard, being honest with you. I mean, um, I suppose one of the big... We've got to stand to attention, I suppose, Gerard just did for, for all of you. It's going to be clear to, clear to play from left to right tomorrow, so I just uh, want to hear your views. How do you think it's going to go? Well, I, I think Cork can win this match. I mean, uh, it's been spoken about all week. I mean, if they get something, a good return out of the half-hour line, who haven't produced the goods here to date, and uh, some intriguing battles. Look at, I mean, this man in our picture here, Brian Lohan. I mean, if he's he's down in the middle against Brian Cork, I mean, Brian has been the star performer in the last two matches for Cork, and I mean, it's, it's an intriguing, fascinating duel. Match is underway, and it's clear who have whatever light breeze there is supporting them for the opening 35 minutes. And straight away, here they are defending with Jerry O'Grady trying to get the ball away out into the centre. Colin Lynch sweeping it way down. Donald O'Cusack coming from his goal. Secure, doing a quick turnaround, linking up with the two thirds of the full back line. That's Brian Murphy, hot to handle. And there was an early pull there, a jersey pull indeed by David Hoey. On his man, his man being Timmy McCarthy. 
So Dickie Murphy, who uh, has, of course, refereed four All-Ireland Senior Finals, wasn't involved for the last two years because he was a selector with the Wexford Senior Hurlers. Good to see him back, that familiar smile. Oh, yeah, no doubt about that. And uh, Anthony Daly down in front of us there was screaming with Brian Murphy coming out and maybe he had fouled the ball, but I, I don't think he did that. I mean, it was like a hot potato in his hand there. I mean, the start of the match. This is John Gardner. 70 metres out, gone to the right. First opportunity, gone a begging. John playing in his 17th championship match. David Fitz thinking about a quick talk out. The puck outs are going to be very interesting this afternoon. Keep a really good eye on them. We know all about Cork's uh, penchant for taking short or deliberate puck outs and then building in measured fashion. Well, Claire have been studying this very carefully all through the summer. Let's see what they can do. Straight down the middle towards their centre forward, Tony Carmody. But it's won there instead by Jerry O'Connor, who went deep. O'Connor challenging Colin Lynch, beaten. Lynch has it. 70 metres out. Going for the opening score. Again, it's tailing to the right. A wide apiece. Yeah, but it was very evident from the puck out. Davy Fitz, who was straight down on top of Ronan Kernan. Ronan had a difficulty the last day against Waterford with Seamus Prendergast. And uh, I'm sure Anthony Daly are going to use that tactic as well. Put the pressure on Ronan Kern certainly. And uh, uh, Derek McMahon was very, very uh, efficient the last day as well. Got four points from play. A big man around the half hour. So a lot of ball will go down on top of those guys. And this is Cork's puck out, and it's mopped up here by Colin Lynch. His second shot. It's gone to the right again. The goalkeepers are so interesting in the modern game of hurling. It just goes to show you how the sport has evolved over the years. Yeah, it's but not I mean, just a case of shot stopping and then tucking it out as long as you can go. But there are times, though, I mean, when you must deliver the ball long. I mean, Cork have had problems, there's no doubt about that. I mean, the short puck out has caused problems for them as well. I mean, it has been very effective when, when, it, when it came into, it, into, into being forced. But I mean, most teams have copped onto it now and they've picked up the loose man around the half back line or on the full back line. And, We've been forced to hit the ball long and we haven't great ball. Cork haven't had great ball ringers and winners in the half hour line. John Gardner's winning this one. Down towards Brad Corker, waiting for it there. He runs away from him. Jerry Quinn. One of the best defensive covering players that Clare have got this year. They were trying to make some headway over there. And that is Brian O'Connell who's down there. Not the best for wear. John Gardner was spoken to by the referee. Yeah, you know, watch it here again. Look, it, it is body charge straight into the, the midriff, really, and uh, there's no doubt about it. It is a free for clear. It has to be an absolutely perfectly executed side to side charge, as the rule book words it. Most people talk in terms of a shoulder. So Niall Gilligan coming out to take this free, looking for the opening point of the match. Gilligan playing in his 39th championship game, 29 points so far in five games this summer for a Clare team who must be confident on the back of two good wins over Waterford and Wexford. It's a dangerous ball in. Ball's back down here, Dermot McMahon. 20 metres out, half blocked. Still around there, dangerous. And Tony Carmody hits it and puts it over the bar. The opening point comes after nearly four minutes of play. A lot of dominance from Clare. They've won a lot of good early ball, and finally they managed to get something out of the possession. Tony Carmody here at the end of this movement, left alone, just uh, given enough latitude, good score. The puck out is a long one. Brian Lowen there contesting with Brian Corcoran. Niall McCarthy dodging this way and that. Taking over is Jerry O'Connor, 45 metres out from goal. That's over the bar. Good score by Jerry. Cork will be hoping to dominate the midfield exchanges with their duo in there for the last couple of years, Tom Kenny and Jerry O'Connor, known in Cork as the Tom and Jerry Show. Yeah, it was a great score, but very interesting there. The long ball, that was a, uh, the ball was going out to Brian Cochran, I mean, to come out maybe out to the 40 for the puck outs and the breaking ball then was won by Niall McCarthy and set up onto Jerry, Jerry O'Connor for a good score. Davy Fitzgerald varying the puck out this time out towards Markham, runs beyond him all the way in towards Niall Gilligan looking for a really big match this afternoon taking on Pat Mulcahy back there as well to try and help out is uh, Ben O'Connor runs loose to Tony Griffin the much travelled Tony having a shot and putting it over the bar great point by Tony Griffin man who has spent so much of the winter studying in Canada and he's put Clare back in front here again took Dermot O'Sullivan this way and that, beat him to the block and got that ball over the bar. 
2-1. Clear leading. Referee wants to have uh, a little word with Niall McCarthy and with Sean McMahon. Centre forward, centre back. So Donald Cusack from Cloyne. Birthplace of Christy Ring, of course, and uh, we've had the Christy Ring Cup played already in exciting fashion here and won by Westmead. Brian Murphy stunned Dithers somewhat, but is assisted. Ball away, out of danger. Tom Kenny getting back onto it again. The little hand pass inside to Timmy McCarthy, beating the attempted block there of Sean McMahon. The huge one, it's a good one, it's over the bar. Timmy McCarthy from Castle Lions. Tying it up at two points apiece. This was a very good score. Yeah. Made from there by Tom Kenny on to Timmy McCarthy, and he had the confidence and the courage to go for it. Great point. Good boost for Timmy and a good start from him. He's, he's shipped an awful lot of criticism now at the last couple of games, and uh, certainly it was the one that he wanted to boost his own confidence as well, and a great ball inside by Tom Kenny. This time off the legs of Dermot McMahon, picking it up as Colin Lynch of Clare. The Lizzie Casey man. Good ball inside, he was spotting Tony Griffin, was inside the cover, never quite reached him. Nicely away by John Gardner, back helping out. Sean O'Gohalpi now, the court captain, switching it across here, intended for Kieran Murphy, and Kieran couldn't quite reach it. That's a switch of play today by Cork, Kieran Murphy at wing forward, Ben O'Connor into the corner, that was the, the move, the tactical move, although I noticed that Ben has switched around. And uh, he's now out around midfield. In fact, right now he's marking Brian O'Connell. Frank Lowen. Ready to take this sideline cut. Alan Markham, goal scorer the last day. Two goals in the previous match against Waterford. Jerry O'Connor now steadying himself. Beautiful ball down towards Brian Corcoran. Just got away from his man, Brian Lowen. Covered the move, however. Trying to force him out into the corner. Jersey pull. Referee says play on. Corcoran does. Awkward angle. Just a little bit too tricky. And Davy Fitzgerald there, you can see him in picture. Urging on Brian Lowen not to be outfoxed by Brian Corcoran when Corcoran makes those kind of dangerous runs. Two wides by Cork. Plenty of movement by forwards on both teams, trying to outfox the uh, defenders early on. Game still at the settling down stage. O'Halpin oh, lets it drop down, tries to take it at the second attempt, fails to do so. Dermot McMahon, who's having a good season, beaten for it by Jerry O'Connor, who started really well in midfield. He's the dominant character there so far. Frank Lowen over there arguing the point. Brian Corcoran uh, over as well with Ben O'Connor. Line ball into Colin Lynch. Lynch lets fly and he's put it wide. A lot of wayward shooting now by Clare. That's three wides by them from situations where they might well have got more scores. And all those three wides, by the way, are by the midfielder, Colin Lynch. Yeah, he has had a lot of possession jars, certainly in the first couple of minutes there, but uh, it's where we're shooting, and uh, maybe he might be better off putting the inside forwards, trying to get him back into play by putting the ball in around the square. Niall McCarthy trying to establish mastery in the 40. Timmy McCarthy after this one. Brian Corcoran there as well. Looking for assistance. Inside to Joe Dean. Corcoran's available still just yards from him. Another option taken up as Ronan Curran beats the block there of Colin Lynch into the corner. Taking it up there is a missing it, Frank Lowen, very number two, helped out there by Sean McMahon. Chasing after him is Kieran Murphy. They get the ball away downfield into the centre. Ronan Curran again makes a very good catch here. Started well against Waterford and then got into difficulty. Curran available once again. Taking it up onto the stick, beating Tony Carmody to it. Jerry O'Connor is available to help out. Here comes Shalago Halpine. He's 25 metres out. Oh, Halpine has scored the last day. Looking for another one. And Oh, Halpine has got two points in two games. Not half bad for a number seven who had never scored before this year's championship. He's getting the taste for forward play. Yeah, and again, it was great play again by Ronan Curran again to get possession and to use the hand pass. And I mean, it's very evident. I mean, a great running forward by, by Cork. And I'm sure that's what they're going to try to do against Clare is when they're in possession, get the runners going, get, get running at that Clare defence and try and open them up and open up the gaps there because they feel they have the legs on Clare. But Clare have started very, very well as well. And I mean, the way we're shooting, maybe they could have been 
maybe one or two points ahead. Here's Tony Griffin, outside to Alan Markham. Cork leading for the first time. That's blocked well by Donegal, Donald O'Kiozak, outside towards Sullivan. Balanced beautifully there and whipped away out of danger by Pat Mulcahy. Down towards Ben O'Connor, who's playing at right half forward, in spite of the number 13 on his back. Here comes Jerry Quinn, the left half for Clare. Three Clare, three Cork men around him, make it four. In the end, sheer force of numbers, gets the ball back. Tom Kenny sweeping it down, put the pressure there on Brian Lowen. Picking it up here is Niall McCarthy, there's great pace in the match. Free to Cork, they're all really fired up in this Guinness All-Ireland hurling semi-final. Yeah, and you look at Markham here, I mean, Adura, I think he should put the ball over the bar, being honest with you, when he got that chance. I mean, it's early, early, early stage in the game, and it was a difficult angle trying to beat Don Love Cusick from, from, from that point. And uh, it's it's an opportunity now for Ben O'Connor here to, to give point, uh, Park and Earl a point on the board and put him two points ahead. I think Alan Markham was thinking, last two games I've got three goals. Yeah, I mean, but he was, going. Much, he was much closer to goal than uh, in those previous occasions than he was now. Ben O'Connor with the free. It's high and it's accurate. First of the day landed by Ben O'Connor and Cork lead by four points to two. Very mild day here in Dublin. No cold, perfect afternoon for hurling. On a busy weekend once again in the GAA Championship calendar. This is aimed towards Alan Markham, dropped by John Gardner. Going in there to try and help out was Pat Mulcahy, under pressure, the court backs, Markham offloading it there beautifully to Niall Gilligan, running at Sullivan. Awkward angle, Brian Murphy going back, so too is Andrew Quinn, it's Quinn who has the best chance of taking it. Trying to open up the play, that's a great ball for Diamond McMahon, but he was trapped inside, there was a push. And it's going to be a free into Clare. The covering back there was done by Tom Kenny. But the push results in a free from the 20 meter line and Niall Gilligan has this fairly simple routine chance to tap it over the bar. Yeah, and it's quite evident as well that Niall has played a lot off from goal as well. He's trying to move Dermot O'Sullivan way off from the square as well. When he gets that ball, he's way on the left hand side and it's a great crossfield ball and uh, he'll be trying to move the big man from the square and, and gain possession, trying to get a few scores further out. Well, both full forwards are trying much the same thing as Gilligan hits it high up into the netting behind the goal but accurately between the posts, it's first of the afternoon, and it's Cork four points, Clare three. Nile from the famous Six Mile Bridge Club, produced so many great hurlers for Clare teams down the years. This is Anthony Daly, and who captained Clare to two All-Ireland successes during the 90s. The battle in the middle of the field, Jerry Quinn coming forward from left top, blocked down well. Once again, Kieran Murphy trying to get tight on him, didn't succeed that time. That's Pat Mulcahy having a great game once again. Sean Halpin going forward with great determination, partly blocked, however. It falls to Tony Griffin, chance to have a quick look up to see who's around. Going for the score, it's an awkward, it's a difficult one, he's just miscued it. Yeah, but you get credit to Clare, they're working very, very hard when they don't have the ball there. Sean Oga Halpin, Halpin maybe felt he had plenty of time and space to get away at his clearance, but he was blocked and hooked. Here's Timmy McCarthy doing well to win the puck out here. He wins a lot of puck outs if you go back through the tapes over the last number of years. Didn't use it well there. Here's Colin Lynch, nobody closing him down. Dropped beautifully forward towards Gilligan, comes way off, full forward once again, batted out by O'Sullivan. Jerry O'Connor trying to take it up into his stick. It comes instead here to Andrew Quinn, going left. Keeper has a chance to counter-attack here. Donald O'Cusick able to pick out a man, going towards Kieran Murphy this time. Tapped it down for Tom Kenny. Little bit of a gap in front of him now. Inside towards Brian Corker, didn't quite make it. Second time of asking, picked off here by a clear defender. It's Brian O'Connell is way back there helping out. Here comes Andrew Quinn on his left-hand side, going for a score, again he's missed it. And the Clare shooting is not good, only 15 minutes gone, and they have five wides. Yeah, they're getting plenty of possession, I'm sure Anthony Dale will be furious down there. They've gone on to great ball, breaking ball, they've been very quick to react, and uh, certainly they should be ahead at this stage in the game, because I mean, they've had excellent scoring opportunities, and that's one that we just saw that went badly wide. Tell you what, all those who said Cork were going to just get through this fairly straightforwardly and easily, it's anything but a cakewalk. It shouldn't be when it comes to the semi-final of the championship anyway. You expect to have four 
evenly or fairly evenly matched teams. There's no doubt about it. I mean, the way this game has started, I mean, there's a great contest out there. It's hard, it's fair. I mean, it's everything good about an All-Ireland semi-final. And that's what the general public looking in it will want to see as well. Colin Lynch, great cut up inside there towards Tony Griffin. Breaks down here well. Gilligan once again pressurised by Jerry O'Connor. Seemed to go off O'Connor, it did. It's the first 65 of the afternoon. Lots and lots of Clare pressure. They're grouping well as a team, and they are constantly making it hard for Cork to try and get the running game going, to get their passing on target. And they're just trying to unnerve them as much as they can. So Sean McMahon will be the taker of this 65. Clare who uh, has the ability, when he puts balls over the bar from distance, to really lift the crowd and lift his own team. 84 points is his tally in 45 championship matches so far. This is 45th. Now, where's that going to end? It's over the bar. It's a big lift for Clare. It's a big score for Sean McMahon from the 65. And it's four points apiece, level for the second time. Most at times, tactics brilliantly employed by the coaches, studied and known by the players. Everybody trying to steal a march of the opposition. Good catch by Jerry Quinn. And if much of the ball comes down his direction, he'll dominate. He's that kind of player. This is Brian Murphy from Bride Rovers in Rathcormac. Up here as far as Niall McCarthy, going left and right, trying to take Sean McMahon out of position and uh, doing what I think was anticipated before the game, trying to open the gap, a channel for Cork to run the game right through the centre. Yeah, but it's very noticeable as well, Giordano, when we haven't been able to use the sharp, when Cork haven't been able to use the sharp puck, I mean, when they're hitting it long, I mean, that the clear backline are very, very dominant, the half-back line particularly, I mean, Andrew Quinn, or Jerry Quinn has started the game very, very well over left half-back as well, and uh, with Johnny McMahon, uh, McMahon and David Hoy, they have a very formidable partnership, and I mean, it's, it's going to be in that line, of, I mean, I think Cork will have to break down. Two great half-back lines as John Gardner strikes and John Gardner scores first pointed free for John Gardner struck, struck three great points against Waterford and it's five points to four it's settling down into the makings of a right good contest Davy Fitzgerald Dermot McMahon drifting in after this one, hoping for a break, but it's his man, Sean O'Gohalpine, who followed back very deliberately, took good possession. Jerry O'Connor back there to help out. O'Halpine almost getting lost, does get lost. And Alan Markham dragged down, free in. Chance for Clare to draw level. An occasion where Cork might have got the ball away with simple, more effective hurling. And sometimes that short passing game gets uh, very much unstuck. And you give credit to Clare, Gerald. I mean, the, every time the Cork get the ball, I mean, there's there's men outside them and they're, they're electing to go the short route rather than hit the ball long. And uh, Sean Oak certainly had time in his hands to clear the ball down the field and he elected not to do so. And the short hand pass was intercepted. And the Clare guys are working, working very, very hard when they don't have possession. Clare gaining in confidence the whole time. One point so far for Niall Gilligan from a free. And this is a second. And it's five points apiece. Two from two for Niall Gilligan. Fascinating time. Place in the All-Ireland final on that second Sunday in September at stake. Second semi-final coming up next Sunday, of course. Kilkenny against Galway. Well, Cork standing back and allowing Frank Lowen to come across, but he stumbles. And the referee is in just as Jerry O'Grady was taking the ball away. Going to be a free to Cork, a trip, I think. Free to Clare, I should say. It's free to Clare, Jerry. Yeah. And I mean, Cork are at six and seven there. Nobody willing to come and actually meet, meet the ball that was breaking down the centre. And uh, everybody seemed to be leaving it for somebody else. And uh, this is one that's going to be launched by Davy, I'm sure, at the, at the edge of the square. Interesting how Kieran Murphy, Brian Corker, and Joe Dean, who are playing full forward for Cork, not one of them has a sh had a shot on the Clare goal so far after 20 minutes of play. Here's Tony Griffin, meanwhile. He's had shots. He's got a point. 
it's a second. And Clare lead once again, 6-5. They're happy. Well, they might be. It's a very effective game plan that they're implementing and they're spotting how Cork can be vulnerable. But it's a simple game plan. I mean, there's no magic magic about it. I mean, it's simple in the game of hurling. I mean, you stop your guy, with, with your opponent when he has possession, you work your socks off, and Clare are doing that much better at the moment than Cork. That's Brian O'Connell. It's a huge ball down. Should favour O'Sullivan, leaving it, leaving it, uh, yes, in the end, letting it go by for a puck out. Interesting Cork this year, played some wonderful hurling in the opening half of the Monster Final against Tipperary. Won but didn't play brilliantly against Waterford up to the time that uh, Brian Corcoran got that all-important late goal. And they're not playing particularly brilliantly this afternoon. No, it's certainly not. And I mean, the inside line certainly means the quality that's in there, Joe Dean, Brian Corcoran and uh, Ben O'Connor, you'd like to get ball in there as quickly as possible and even to Claire Murphy. But I mean, it's been held up outside and there's no ball being pulled on the ground. It's all running with it. Here's Kenny. Through the middle once again, Tom Kenny. It opens up for him, and it's saved brilliantly by Davy Fitzgerald. A wonderful piece of goalkeeping. It should have been buried. There was a support player there, Joe Dean, but Tom Kenny went through. The connection wasn't the greatest, but credit the goalkeeper. Good save. But it's a fantastic save. I mean, if we see this again, it is brilliant because the ball actually just bounces just in front of him and he gets the touch to Hurley. And I mean, it's knocked out for a 65. Fantastic save and a great run again by Tom Kenny. Well, he's been a hero for so many years. Davy Fitzgerald made his debut against Limerick in 1990. Came straight out of minor the previous year. Claire and Offaly had a terrific minor battle, I remember. There's a blood substitution that'll be needed. David Howey going off. Bora Quinn, the doctor, attending to him. Coming in is Connor Plunkett, by the way. While the stricken player is attended to. Meanwhile, there's a 65 following Davy Fitzgerald's heroics. Then O'Connor to take the 65. Where Cork might have had a goal. They'll be content with a point now. From this 65, dropping to the right, and it's dropped wide. That was a great save. That's the way Claire will look at it. Cork will feel it should have been buried. On such saves can games turn, yeah. even at this early stage. Yeah, oh, when Tom Kenny was running through that time, Gerard, I thought he was only going to elect to put the ball over the bar, but I mean, he elected to, to, to hit the shot. It wasn't the greatest power, but I mean, the, 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 the enormity of the save was when the ball bounced, he actually got to touch with it because it easily would have slipped over the hurley. Dermot uh, McMahon, his physical presence is causing difficulties for Sean O'Gohalpine. He's a strong man. Here's Pat Mulcahy, one of the best right cornerbacks in the game this season. He took too many steps there, and it's going to be a free in. He can argue as much as he wants, but Dickie Murphy is the official in charge. It's Dickie's call. Yeah, it's a great call. Gerald has no doubt about it. I mean, again, it's part of the game plan with Clare, as I said. I mean, to, 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 to don't let your man out uh, uh, to get an easy clearance and to block the hand pass if he's attempting to block it. And it's it's working fantastically well. And I mean, we saw how effective it was against Wexford the last time uh, with Clare. They're full forward and we're working very, very, very hard. David Howey is back in. And so Connor Plunkett, the temporary substitute, is replaced. Meanwhile, all eyes on Niall Gilligan. Just outside the 45 meter line, straight in front of the post. Routine by his standards, it's a third. His eye is in, his accuracy is very assured, he looks confident. And Clare lead by seven points to five. Donalo Cusack varying the puck out again, going to the left this time. Jerry O'Connor there to take. Down towards Brian Corker, ready to try and take on his man. Who's the other Brian, Brian Lowen. And Lion, Brian Lowen gets in his stick, makes the clearance, it's effective, and it keeps Brian Corker in at bay. Just winning those little duels is so important to build up the confidence. And it's been a long time since Cork's last score. It was in the 16th minute. So we're looking at something uh, approaching uh, nine minutes. Sideline cut here by Ben O'Connor, and uh, that's over. He's a wonderful exponent of that art, and it's a second point for Ben O'Connor. The first coming from a conventional free. 
And it's seven points to six. Little between the teams. Clare edging it. John Allen happy, or at least happier. And John's brother Jerry, I'm told, is watching it in Toronto, and he's been responsible for feeding this Cork team. He's a hotelier down south. There's Dermot McMahon. His striking of the ball has got much, much better this summer. Link play is good. Markham, over. It's Andrew Quinn indeed, who was up in support, coming in on the side where Alan Markham had been playing. And that's his first point, and Clare lead by two points to one. But good vision by Dermot McMahon to pick out the man with the blue helmet, and it's over the bar. Yeah, and it all came from the puck out again, having a big man in a, in, in a crucial position. Dermot McMahon and fed it off very, very well to Andrew Quinn. Lynch blocks it down. Sean McMahon coming into the centre of the field because uh, Niall McCarthy's drifted into that sector as well. Oh, Halpin's in there challenging. Ben O'Connor is in challenging. The referee might throw the ball in to end the uncertainty. There should be just two in to contest this. The two number nines, Jerry O'Connor, Colin Lynch of Clare on the left. Lynch trying to roll it up onto the stick. Finally, the stalemate is broken up. McMahon trying to get it forward. Ben O'Connor trying to win possession. In the end, it is Ronan Curran. Back to Pat Mulcahy. Trying to pick out Brian Corcoran. Now he's managed to get inside Brian Lowen, but into the corner. Frank Lowen's over there to help his brother if he needs it. It wasn't a good ball in, and it's Frank Brian Lowen once again. Listen to the crowd, listen to the Clare supporters cheering on his every move. And it went off a, a court player, and it's a Clare line ball, and everybody's trying to G up the bannermen, starting with their goalkeeper, saluting Brian Lowen. Sheer effort and sheer determination. But it's a 70-minute game and a long, long way yet before the resolution of this tie. David Hoey cutting it up. Runs all the way through. Dermot O'Sullivan's back there, challenged and pressurised by Niall Gilligan. Andrew Quinn's over there as well. His man has got across to join him, Brian Murphy. Referee might have to blow it up again. He doesn't, and it's out over the sideline anyway. It's one of the best efforts of Tony Griffin. Funny little piece on the programme today, the GAA president, Sean Kelly, always shows his quirky sense of humour. He's talking about Tony Griffin and saying he's noted recently in a paper that uh, he's thinking about getting married. And he's looking at a Canadian uh, woman, maybe. I was telling, talking to Tony earlier about it, and he was just saying to me, uh, he noted it as well, but uh, Sean Kelly's line is, he's too young to marry, should be 30 to marry at least, and he's thinking of bringing a motion before next year's Congress, GAA players shouldn't marry before <laughs> the age of 30. <laughs> Here's Tony Griffin. And that's gone wide. Eight-six. Still clear lead. Donalo Cusack. Jerry Quinn has followed Ben O'Connor across to the near side of the field and a switch in the court forward line. This ball runs up here. Andrew Quinn once again, now he's back at top of the right. Donalo Cusack again, a quick look around. The ball has dropped short to the court goalkeeper a number of times. Clare won't be too pleased with that. Timmy McCarthy's jersey was pulled initially, but it goes back there as far as Tony Carmody. Over a huge distance, and it's over the bar. Great point by Carmody. Oh, he was a good 55 metres out that time. Cork go with a short puck out again to Ronan Curran. Clare by three points. Pressure once again on Brian Lowen. Enjoying himself down there in the battle of the Bryans. Brian Corcoran slips. And Brian Lowen gets the ball away into the middle of the field. Batted back down by Tom Kenny. Down as far as Niall McCarthy. Quick little look up. His side three points behind. High ball in, going to the right. Difficult to keep in play. In fact, impossible. But it's the Clare fans who have enjoyed the opening 30 minutes. Yeah, big Clare crowd here to Jura. today, Joran. They're certainly up for it, and they're getting great inspiration from the team out in the field as well because they're working, working very, very hard, and they're getting the points to tally up on it as well. And uh, it, it, it's clear indication down there that Cork are struggling big time from their puck out. I mean, every time that Don Cusick has got the ball, I mean, it's come down, and Clare are dominating in that half back line. And the likes of Joe Dean, we haven't seen him in the first half. There's no ball gone inside, and Brian Cork can get in possession. It's nearly out toward those corner flag where he has to go for the ball. And I mean, certainly Cork won't win a match on that and on the performance at the moment.
This time it's Alan Markham who wins it from the puck out. Out to Tony Griffin as well. Well, apart from a, a great hurler, is a wonderful athlete. That one is going to the right. Missed opportunity. Two points so far for Tony Griffin. But all of the inside forward line for Clare has uh, got onto the score sheet so far. Referee having words there with Dermot McMahon. Just warning him about something that's going on, which he's noted. Anthony Daly urging on his team. We got a glimpse there a little while ago of John Allen having words with Cher Cunningham, trying to hatch up a plan to see how they can counteract what Clare are doing. Sean McMahon broken down. Colin Lynch. With a push that time by Dermot O'Sullivan, he gets away with it to John Gardner. On his left-hand side, towards Kieran Murphy, runs on here into the corner. Back there to help out is Frank Lowen for Clare. Wearing number two, playing at left corner back as he's done for most of his career. John Gardner, the wing back for Cork, swung around that time by Alan Markham, free to Cork. But well, we know what Clare are doing. They're doing the right thing from their point of view, and they're winning by three. What should Cork be doing? Well, certainly, I mean, um, like when you're struggling underneath the puck, but maybe bringing Brian Corkin out there just for maybe five or ten minutes out to centre forward, try and win position, try and get themselves back into the game. I mean, we're conceding, or Cork are conceding too much ball to Clare altogether. And like Clare have done their warm up, done the work, as I said, I mean, they're working very, very hard. And I mean, we, we spoke about it before the game. I mean, if Cork don't win at half hour line, it's very hard to get ball inside, and we're struggling there at the moment. All right, well. Cork still trying to come forward with Kieran Murphy here, trying to lower the gap. He's succeeded. His first point of the match. Kieran Murphy from the Sarsfields Club in Glanmire, making it nine points to seven. Getting by David Hoey. There was an earlier block there by Colin Lynch, but it went unrewarded. And Cork getting within two points of Clare. David Fitzgerald does uh, taking his time with those puck outs, trying to measure it accurately. John Gardner reading the signals. Held up, it's going to be a free down for Cork. Mention of freeze, Clare have not conceded any free to Cork yeah, in and around, say, the 45 metre zone. And that's why Joe Dean hasn't been on the score sheet. Well, that's it. And I mean, it's good that's discipline. One of the reasons. It's good discipline by Clare themselves. And I mean, they have moved John off in the corner into, into full forward just to see would uh, Brian Lawn stay with Joe. But he, Brian is. His job today is to pick up Brian Cochran and he's gone out right corner back on top of Brian Cochran. So game plan working successfully so far. I was talking with a number of Clare people before this game and they were saying yes, they expected a big first half performance from their team, but will they be able to sustain it? John Gardner. Huge one in. Right into the teeth of that full back line, and again it is Brian Lawn has been he's been doing all through his career since his debut back in 1993 as a senior player. And there are too many steps taken. Some of the core players are protesting. Referee doesn't agree. Nine ball given to Clare, and Clare get the ball way out of danger. Up towards Tony Griffin. One minute about a time to be played. Trying to go by Pat Mulcahy. Cork trying to stand firm. Down behind the goal is uh, Cork's coach and manager, John Allen. Just trying to get things going. That's the side where Cork are attacking down by Hill 16. So into the final half minute of the actual 35 minutes of play. Sean McMahon, a great ball ahead, Dermot McMahon, his cousin managed to get inside, Oh, Alpine tries to slow his progress, referee allowed an advantage and runs loose into Stonolo Kilzak, and he manages to get the ball out as far as John Gardner, there was a great chance there for Clare and for Dermot McMahon, in the end the clearance is by Brian Murphy, into the centre, Colin Lynch, always oh, so determined, head down, quick look around every so often to see what's running and what's moving, they're all after him. Four players. How many steps is he going to take? In the end, he's won himself a free in because the ball was on the stick for most of the time. Great play by Colin Lynch. Oh, I think the referee's given a free out, Gerard. Has he's he given, given a free out for over carrying the ball, yeah. 
It was some run by Lynch. It was some run, I think, but I mean, there was more than the three steps, definitely, and uh, I think the referee is right, yeah, it is a field. Let's have a look at it again here, if we can. The ball was on the stick for quite a bit of the time. I did think he was overcarrying when he got it back into his hand. Now there he is running, yeah, too many steps. Just about. Just, just about. I mean, I've seen many players get away with it. I mean, it's a bit harsh, I suppose. I mean, in a lot of games you see player taking more than the three steps, and uh, he's been penalised there, and most people in Clare, I suppose, would have felt that should have been a free in. Clare are leading this match. They're leading it by nine points to seven in stoppage time. Clare have made more chances as well. 19 chances against 12 for Cork. In a game which has so far failed to produce a goal, but one great piece of goalkeeping. David Hoey. Referees whistle the final whistle of the first half. Clare will be much the happier going in at the break. They play to a game plan. And in David Fitzgerald, they've had an inspired leader. A wonderful save from Tom Kenny midway through the first half. Anthony Daly will be saluting Brian Lowen's energy and resolve and the great leadership he has given the team in the opening 35 36 minutes there are just a couple of points between the teams but cork appreciate that they have an awful lot to do to really challenge and to threaten this cork this clear team who are leading at the break by nine points to seven They used to always say that the one match nobody ever wanted to lose was the semi-final of the championship. OK, to lose the final is awful, but at least you get to play in it and you get to share in the drama, the big day. Everybody wants to be there. One of these will be. Will it be Clare, who lead right now by two points? Second half underway, and it's uh, Kieran Murphy who has got to left half forward, by the way. That is the Aaron zone left half forward as a replacement for Timmy McCarthy, the half-time sub. Meanwhile, Tom Kenny coming through. Not the best of shots, poor option. Both sides will be absolutely fired up for the uh, first few minutes of this second half. That you could be absolutely certain of. Yeah, and I mean, uh, Kier Murphy came on the last day against, uh, against Waterford as well and did very well. I mean, there I'm sure for his height and his physique, I mean, for the, for the Puck Ghost particularly. And, uh, I mean, we'll need, Cork will need a, second, a big second half out of him. And certainly, I mean, Timmy McCarthy's gone off, but there's, there are other guys out there, there as well, I'm sure, that, I mean, that need to up their performance considerably as well. Because, like... The game is, is, is going with Clare at the moment. They seem very lively. There's a spring in their step. They're confident now that they can actually go on and win this game. Well, Cork are the Munster and the All-Ireland champions. They're there to be knocked. Clare putting it up to them as John Gardner sets up this attack. Davy Fitzgerald had to be absolutely secure. Holding on with Joe Dean lingering. And the ball never came to Dean. There was no chance there for him to put it into the back of the net. Pressure still on the Clare backs. Frank Lowen cursing his luck. Couldn't quite take it up and uh, get rid of it. But that was good goalkeeping again by David Fitzgerald. It didn't look as spectacular as the save in the first half, but it was just as vital. It was vital as well, but I suppose, I mean, it was a direct ball again in by John Garner. That was the nearest Jodine we saw coming to, to, to the ball in, 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 in maybe 35, 36 minutes of hurling. And uh, Park got to be more direct in the second half, get the ball in around the square every time they get possession. That's Jerry O'Grady, and uh, who got the last touch there? It was Tony Griffin. No complaints from Tony. Line ball to Cork. John Allen on the sideline along with Anthony Daly. Just urging on their charges for one really good last 35 minutes. Jerry O'Connor ready to cut the ball up. Good connection. Drop down there. That's O'Grady again who's marking Joe Dean. Does a good job, gets the ball away. Ronan Curran under pressure with Tony Carmody, strong physical presence there. John Gardner trying to help out, kept, kept it in play. Jerry O'Connor back there to Pat Mulcahy. Lobbed in over the head of the back, David Hoey that time. Brian Lowen favour to come out to take this one. What a match Lowen is playing. The man about whom so many questions were asked, but it was mostly about pace and the amount of hurling that he'd played over the years in particular after the loss to Tipperary against uh, Michal Webster on that occasion. It was a very, very tough afternoon for Brian Lowen. He's trained hard, he's worked hard, and he had the character to come back and stand out there and be severely tested. David Hoey's sideline cut. Good ball down towards McMahon. Was there a push? There was. It's going to be a free out to Cork. Chance for them to launch yet another attack. They've had two attacks so far. 
in the opening three minutes of the second half. No scores coming from them. Jimmy Sullivan from Cloyne. Inside his own 45 meter line. Cork with a light breeze behind them now for this half. And again, it's Brian Lowen. It's like 95 all over again. But 10 years on, he is still delivering the goods. Dermot McMahon. Great ball. Donald O'Kiza coming secure, just as Davy Fitz was at the other end. Up to John Gardner. Pressure back on the Clare backs. Back in once again. This time it skids on the ground and runs harmlessly out over the end line. And there was nothing whatsoever that Brian Corcoran could do about it. Hasn't scored, hasn't had too many chances, as much as anything because of this man here, Brian Lowen. But also, I think, to most, because, as the panel were saying, and we all agree, the ball simply isn't going in fast enough. Not fast enough. I mean, again, all right, I mean, Brian Lowen is playing very, very well in the full-back line, and uh, there's no doubt about that. He's reading it very, very well. I mean, he came across there, great catch and great clearance as well. Then. But, I mean... Cork are struggling in a lot of areas around the field and uh, certainly, I mean, um, maybe I know they made the change already, maybe like they're probably giving five or six minutes to another two or three players there before you'll see other changes. That's gone out of the sideline, once again it's a Cork ball. Clare having to weather the storm now in these opening minutes of the second half as Pat Mulcahy shapes up here to uh, Alan Markham. Colin Lynch also coming in with his top and safety worth. Yeah, I mean, Claire, we're thinking there that this is their line ball, you know. So, again, to be interesting to see again, I think it was a clear ball, to be honest with you. Well, Michael Wadding as the line's gone down on this near side. Michael from Waterford. He uh, read it as a cork ball. Look to Claire ball. John Gardner's take. Miss hit it towards O'Connell. Robbed. Jerry O'Connor trying to take it. Colin Lynch, busy as ever. Outstanding on ceremony, getting in the challenges. Mulcahy nursing it back to Dermot O'Sullivan. Half block, Mulcahy again lashing at it. This time it runs on towards Kieran Murphy, beaten for it by Tony Griffin. It's a mad dash for position. Everybody just trying to get on the ball. It's now getting no has it hooked brilliantly there. Wonderful hook. Still persistence by uh, Gilligan. Kieran Murphy got the hook in. This is Griffin. Dangerous situation for Clare. Shortens the grip from the stick and puts it over the bar. It's the opening point of the second half. It's taken five and a half minutes to produce, but it's Tony Griffin from Bellia who gets his third point of the game. 10-7. Cork under pressure again here. David Hoey raiding the wing back. Not the best of connections. Partly stopped there by the fullback David O'Sullivan. Here's Donald O'Cusack. Looks around. Goes for a long, long, lengthy clearance this time. Up towards Joe Dean on the full forward line. In there, behind them, is Frank Lowen, pressurised by Ben O'Connor. It's still Frank Lowen coming out. A look of determination. Look up, looked up quickly. Tony Griffin couldn't hold it. It's a line ball to Cork. Griffin got a really good point that time after Cork should have cleared their lines but failed to do so. Yeah, and it could have been a goal, Gerald. I mean, it was a great ball back by uh, Nye Gilligan into the centre and he was running in a pace. And, I mean, if he had actually got the first touch right there, he was right bang on goal to have a shot and have a pot of Donald O'Cusick. Daly urges them on. Griffin has had six shots at the target. He scored with three of them. That's a good return. That's a challenge there into the middle of uh, Ronan Curran. I'm not quite sure he was shoulder to shoulder. Comes back out here once again to Jerry O'Connor taking on two Clare men up towards his twin brother Ben. Tripped, gets up quickly, spoons it back into the corner once more. This time it's Niall McCarthy. Great defence by Clare initially. Still managed to get the ball in. It's dangerously in towards Jody. Batted down for David Fitzgerald. And the Clare goalkeeper gets it onto his stick and walks it away downfield. Listen to the crowd again, lifted by that. Great catch by Alan Markham. He's got a lift as well. Up towards Dermot McMahon. Clear by three. Early stage of the second half. Inside towards Gilligan. Now Gilligan wins the duel with Dermot O'Sullivan. They're winning the battles all over the field. Dermot O'Sullivan protesting, but Clare have an edge. They've had it from the word go. And the fans believe it's going to be possible that this will be their day. Long, long way to go yet. Referee with the notebook up and his notebook out and he's shown it there to David O'Sullivan. Ticked for his troubles. Free to Clare. Yeah, and there's no doubt about it, Joe. There is a hunger and there is a desire in this Clare team like to win this match today. And uh, it's not been matched uh, by Cork on the other side. And uh, certainly Clare now are in a, in a great position if they put this one over the bar. It's another one from Gilligan. That's four points from Freeze. 
and Clare open up a four-point lead, 11-7. Cork just haven't quite got that hunger this afternoon. They haven't quite had it this year, in spite of winning the Munster title just last month. But you never know, there's a long way to go. Niall McCarthy, blocked down, taken away from him by Brian O'Connell, one of the youngsters, still under 21. This time it's another youngster, Brian Murphy for Cork, stopped by Colin Lynch, the old warrior. A little hand pass inside to O'Connell. They have a good duo in midfield, working for Clare. It's a huge one from distance, and it's over the bar! And it's Brian O'Connell who gets his first point. Well, Cork may have started the half as though they meant business and had a couple of chances, didn't take them, and now all of a sudden it's Clare again. Back comes John Gardner, stepping away from trouble inside Tony Carmody. Outside it goes to Kieran Murphy. Chasing after him is Jerry Quinn near the sideline. Kept it. Oh, he didn't. Michael Wadding has the line, the flag raised, says he's over the line. And it'll be a line ball for Clare. Well, whatever it is about hunger in sport, if you haven't got it, it's impossible to produce. Your second day at school is never quite like your first. Oh, yeah, and there's, I mean, there, there is still a long way to go yet in this game, but, I mean, at the moment, you would feel that clear, right? I mean, there, there is such a hunger and a drive, and they're getting the crowd behind them now at this stage as well, you know, and uh, it's a big, big ask of Cork now to get back into this game. They need some leadership qualities now. They need the big men to stand up, and uh, certainly the selectors maybe need to be making two or three changes at this stage as well to bring on fresh players because the guys that are out there certainly are not producing it at the moment. There aren't any goals in the game so far, obviously, at 12-7. Cork probably need a goal pretty soon. If Clare get one, well, that could be the gap that would put it beyond Cork's reach. The decibel level rises again. 50,596 have paid in. If you're from Clare, you're loving it. They are. Ben O'Connor has discarded the black helmet to take the sideline cut. Trying to link up inside with a colleague. Kieran Murphy couldn't take it. That's the Aaron's own version. Comes back out towards the other Kieran Murphy. This time it's Jerry O'Grady. Only one Jerry from Curra Finn. Gets it out there towards Tony Griffin. Trying to steal a march on John Gardner. Stepping in Niall McCarthy, whipping on it. And in the end, it's gone out over the sideline. It's a line ball to Clare. So line ball to Clare to be taken by Colin Lynch. Colin Lynch ready to hit this one. That's uh, midway between the two 65s. 12-7. Good connection. Nice ball into Tony Carmody. Getting away from Ronan Curran. Hitting it high and hitting it accurately. Yeah, they're inspired, they're absolutely inspired, and uh, great performers all over the field, and Tony Cowardy, certainly Tony Griffin getting those scores from play, I mean, they're fantastic scores, and... Uh, Four shots the in the end. second half, Talos. Four scores. Four scores, I mean, we said maybe at the start of the game that Clare wouldn't have the forwards, but they're producing the goods today. If you've got the hurling skill and the hurling know-how, Irrespective of whether you're champions or not, it's when you produce it out there. Tom Kenny right now, trying to go through yet again. Clare on mass converging on him. 13 metres out from goal. Brian Corcoran trying to make some headway. Colin Lynch going in there. Aided and abetted by Frank Lowen. Back into the stick there of Sean McMahon. And in the end, it's Lynch. And Lynch drives it away down towards Gilligan. Helping it out here is uh, McMahon. This is Dermot McMahon. Back out towards Tony Carmody. First touch wasn't good, forced outside again onto the perimeter. Still Carmody, just holding up the point of the attack, lobbing it inside there. David O'Sullivan leaving it for Markham, one-handed. Referee allowed an advantage. Coming out there and challenged high was Pat Mulcahy. Surely there's a free out, there is. Just watch this again here. Yeah, it was... But about high challenge, way. differently, you know, and uh, I mean, he's trying to lift the guys. Pat Mulcahy here, look, you can see him in, in, in his approach, you know, he's trying to drive it on, but I mean, 
it's not happening for them today and uh, it's the style of hurling today Jorah's coming against us we were lacking a bit of directness I mean Tom Kenny went through there with a the ball I mean the chance to put the ball over the bar and lost it in the end I mean we're just making maybe taking the wrong options Cork haven't scored for 15 minutes of this game do you remember when Cork were all Ireland champions in 1999 and what happened the following year in the semi-final against Offaly that's right there's no doubt about it. I mean, you win an all and it's even harder afterwards to actually retain it. And this game isn't over yet. I mean, there's still plenty of time to get back into it, but at the moment, you would say it's looking good for Clare. We lead by six points. Dubin McMahon having got a ticking. It's going to be a free to Cork. And pressure now on John Allen and the backroom team to come up with the solutions. Ben O'Connor, two points from freeze, but one from a sideline. And that is over the bar, and it's Cork's first point of the second top, and it's taken nearly 14 minutes of this half alone. I mean, that's the most worrying aspect, uh, uh, Jordan. I mean, OK, if you were a couple of points behind, then you are scoring, but we are not getting the scores either, you know? I mean, to get one point in 14 minutes at this level isn't good enough. Cork just not playing well, not being allowed to play well by a clear team that have energy and resolve in abundance. Wayne Sherlock is, uh, is it Wayne Sherlock? Neil Ronan, in fact, and Wayne Sherlock, both being prepared down by the sideline. Could be a double substitution. Meanwhile, it's Frank Lowen running it to Kieran Murphy, out towards Andrew Quinn, to Colin Lynch. Well, that would have been a magnificent point. He loves hitting those huge ones from out the field. And when they uh, drop to the right or to the left, well, I'm sure he feels uh, pretty awful afterwards. Yeah, he's got himself into very good positions today, and I mean, he hasn't got a, he maybe hasn't had a shoot boot on. Brian Corcoran has been taken off the Cork team. Ronan Curran is also leaving the fray. Neil Ronan has come into the forwards, Wade Sherlock into the backs. Well, that's Brian Corcoran. So many times a star this afternoon didn't quite work out for him and Ronan Curran taken off for the second match in succession. It's a statement of fact by the Cork selectors. It's a brave, big move. It's a big move. I mean, OK, but Ronan was under pressure at centre-back, but I, I, it's a big move for taking Brian Cochran off as well because it was a lot worse than Brian out there as well in the forward line. Joe Dean hasn't scored so far. They need a lift, they might get it, and Dino has done it! Joe Dean from Killa, making it 13 points to nine. Clare still the leaders and still looking good at this stage in the contest, but there's a long 20 minutes of the match still to play. Well, it has been good for Cork over the last two games, Joe. When the test has been asked to them, they have finished the games well. I mean, they've upped their game considerably with 15 minutes to go. They need to do so now. So Cork have made three changes from the five they're allowed. How will they work out? John Gardner's gone into centre-half back. Many people say it's his best position. Here he is, linking up with Brian Murphy. Up towards Ben O'Connor. Instinctively hitting it, knew where the target was, and it lands inside the upright. It's over the bar. Four points for Ben O'Connor. Both sides need to hold the celebrations. There's a lot of hurling to be played, and there's only a goal between the teams. Colin Lynch, by the way, has gone down with an injury, a leg injury. Well, that was a fantastic score, an inspirational score by Ben O'Connor. And I mean, that's if, they're, if you want to score to uh, inspire a team, that certainly one is. And, uh, Get more ball into Joe Dean and into Neil Ronan now and put the pressure on Clare and uh, they have a chance to get themselves back into this game. Well, we're watching this. Donald O'Cusick has gone way out the field, out to have a chat with Niall McCarthy. And he, there he is in picture right now, cheeing up the players. I've never seen him do this before. I think he was getting uh, fed up with what was happening. Colin Lynch has a calf injury. Now, if he were to get into serious injury trouble, Clare would face a major, major difficulty. Clare have been the better team for the first 50 minutes of this game, in my view, no question about it, in fact. 
Those last two points have rallied Cork. The selectors have taken a big gamble. Everybody said they didn't take gambles. They have. I know they made the decisions, John. I mean, they were asked to make decisions because, I mean, the team wasn't performing. They've done so. I mean, uh, Brian Lohan had been dominating around the square as well. There's no doubt about that. I mean, Neil Lohan has been running with a purpose. is to run Brian Lohan as much as he can around. And he's proven in the past. He's agile. He's very, very fit. He's lively on his feet as well. And maybe that will work. Maybe that change will work. That went off shot of Alpine stick. The effort by Dermot McMahon to link up with the inside forwards. It'll be a line ball to Clare. David Howey ready to take it. Nobody marking Colin Lynch. Ben O'Connor slow to get in the challenge. Pressure now on Dermot O'Sullivan. Both teams would be lifted by the points they've scored in the second half so far. By the fact that the game is hanging in the balance. By the fact that Clare, by Cork's title, is there for the taking. And right now Cork are countering Neil Ronan hammering it in, but it's far too easy for David Fitzgerald. No real threat to his goal there. John Gardner comes, great catch. 65 metres out from the Clare goal, nonchalantly striking it, sweeping it beautifully over the bar. And there's just two points between the teams. John Gardner's second score. Well, you know, the way the second half has gone so far, Clare got four in a row, now Cork have got four in a row yeah, themselves. That's, I mean, we're talking about leaders, and, I mean, that move put Garner back at the centre-back is paying off, and, I mean, that was a great catch by him, a great run of defence, and a great strike off his left hand, and, I mean, if that doesn't lift the Cork team, I don't know what will. Virgil Lynch is being prepared by Clare in the restructuring of the Cork team, by the way, Pat Mulcahy is right half. This is into Joe Dean, ready to take on his man O'Grady under pressure. Joe Dean strikes an acute angle, it's over. Joe Dean's second point in about three minutes. It's 13 points to 12, and all of a sudden it looks very ominous from a clear point of view. Cork look to be heading out of the championship, and right now they're hanging on in there and looking very lively with 15 minutes to play. Yes, I mean, it was all about getting the ball into Joe Dean, and it was great delivery up the field again by Tom Kenny, and Joe Dean does what he can do best, is get out in front of his man and get possession, get it over the bar, and uh, they're causing problems now to the clear defence. Tony Carmody, by the way, is changing his boots, that's what he's doing down there. The number 29 is uh, Fergal Lynch. So he's obviously having a boot problem, and the Cork fans are now suddenly beginning to enjoy it. 13-12, a fascinating contest. Next score is crucial. Runs all the way through to Andrew Quinn. Is this the next score? It is! Quinn's second point. Clear lead by two. The ball just broke beautifully for him. And he had fantastic confidence to wallop it over the bar. Interesting thing here, I am noting that uh, Anthony Daly was planning to take Andrew Quinn off and replace him with Fergal Lynch, and now he's changed his mind, at least he has for a while. Just for the next couple of minutes anyway, unless he gets the next ball. Frank Lowen misses, taken down here, Kieran Murphy trying to get the ball through here. Outside it goes towards Neil Ronan, on the angle where he scored in the last match. An impossible situation then, this time it's over the bar. And one between them again. Neil Ronan, once more, coming to Cork's rescue. It's his 13th championship match. A man who made his debut six years ago. And this afternoon, getting his first, his 16th ever in championship hurling. 14 points to 13. Clare still leading. Place in the final next month at stake. A magnificent battle between two great hurling powers as Cork put their title on the line. Ball bounces awkwardly there for Jerry O'Grady. Went back two Cork players against him, Dean and Ben O'Connor, bottled up there, waiting to get a free, didn't get it. Jerry Quinn. Winning it here is Pat Mulcahy, and that's going to be a free in. Alan Markham looked at the referee, he's already being ticked, and the referee will take out the notebook now and issue a yellow card, I think, against Clare's number 12. First yellow card of the match. 
free to Ben O'Connor, 45 metres out, bit of an angle. Chance to level the game with nearly 58 minutes gone. Well, now, who has got the level of energy and the determination? He's got great determination to sustain it for 70 minutes. And Ben O'Connor has put it wide. A bad miss. A let off for Clare, who's still shaded. John Allen still with the problems to resolve. I suppose, Jar, I mean, it is a much better Cork team now. It is a much better. They have responded, I mean, to get themselves back to a point when the game seemed, game, the game seemed to be going away from them and Clare were absolutely flying at that stage. I mean, there's good credit to them. They have worked very hard to get themselves back into the game. I'm crediting both teams. They've given us a fascinating contest. Quinn in there to try and battle with McMahon. That's Dermot McMahon. John Gardner once again trying to take it onto a stick. It's Dermot McMahon instead. The shoulder coming in from Sean O'Halpine. John Gardner coming to help out. There's Tony Griffin. Good ball inside. Once again, it is Tony Carmody over his left shoulder. It's beautifully over the bar. Tony Carmody swings over a fourth point. It could be a crucial score as we approach nearly an hour gone. That's four from four for Tony Carmody, who really has found his confidence this season. Yeah, 15 points to 13. Fantastic score. I mean, off his left hand, high, high ball out of the air to pluck it out of the air and turn off his left. A great, great score. That is Fergal Lynch has come in. That is Alan Markham who's gone off. He's just got himself a yellow card. The manager finally deciding which one of the forwards was going to make way. Neil Rowland came out for that one. He's left it behind to Jerry O'Connor, who's taken off the green helmet to his brother Ben, and that's over the bar, and it should have been in the back of the Clare net. It was as good a goal chance as they're likely to get, but it's 15 points to 14. Yeah, one you, between them. When you see the ball coming through, you would say, was Jerry going to throw over the bar? Hands it across to Ben, and you would say, God, this is in the back of the net. Obviously, too high and over the bar, but point will do, certainly. That should have been a goal. Another goal chances at the other end for Tony Carmody. Tony Griffin coming onto it. He's moving brilliantly. Lovely footwork, great composure into Tony Carmody. And coming across there was Tom Kenny. It's still Clare. Got it out of the end in the end there. And when Sherlock comes out here, John Gardner. That is Jerry O'Connor tripped, free to Cork. Clare still leading. And this could be crucial during the last 10 minutes. Is, is the case of Jerry O'Connor a breaking ball there around the middle of the field, being able to get away from his marker. And we mentioned whether Clare could sustain this pressure for the full 70 minutes. And I mentioned already that Cork have the habit of finishing, even though they haven't played well all, well, all year. This, uh, finishing very very well and it's the pace and the fitness levels have increased and uh, certainly it's beginning to, to come like that at this stage John Gardner it's going slightly to the left trying to keep it in play they succeed it's Kieran Murphy who kept it in play Neil Ronan trying to pick it up look at the number of Clare backs around him but it's still Neil Ronan good composure good style Brian Lowen after him it's still Ronan different kind of threat for Lowen but their support and the forces are back there, augmented by Colin Lynch. Oh, how been brilliantly taken down, getting away from Dermot McMahon. In some difficulty, Claire coming forward, that's Wayne Sherlock wearing number 18. Near the sideline, linesman on the far side of his flag raised, that is Johnny Ryan from Tipperary. And it's a line ball to Clare. Yeah, Chance to put some more pressure on the Cork backs. That's great hustling again by Clare, on Cork at possession there, Sean Hogg again, I mean... Guy is breathing down on top of him, not giving him an inch on the mean, put him under pressure to actually, and the hand pass was intercepted, going across the field. Understandably, the neutrals all around the country will be supporting Clare. They were the outsiders very much coming into this tie, as David Hoey belts it in there. David O'Sullivan goes for it, Wayne Sherlock trying to get it onto his stick. Clare there in numbers, it comes to Tony Griffin, forced out towards the sideline. Blocked down by a combination of O'Halpine over there and uh, one of his support colleagues. There's going to be another change. Jonathan Clancy is going to come on in place of Brian O'Connell. So Jonathan Clancy wearing number 27 coming into the action. 
Got a little bit of championship experience during the all-important qualifiers, which is the platform on which Clare have been able to build a sustain a challenge. Colin Lynch, that's wide. It was a chance to plant it in the court goal area there and cause a moment's hesitation or doubt in the court backs. Failed to materialise. Colin Lynch's wides looking at the statistics on my pad here. Five wides he has hit so far. A lot of wasted uh, opportunities. Meanwhile, it's Ben O'Connor expecting the challenges to come in. Frank Lowen's after him, still trying to hook him. Does well. Really good play, and the ball is driven out by Jonathan Clancy, who's just into the game. Tom Kenny taking it for Cork. One between them, 15 points to 14. Clear the leaders. Out to Colin Lynch. Only about seven minutes to play. Dermot O'Sullivan takes it. The champions are in difficulty, as they've been for most of the match. How will they respond for the last seven, eight minutes? Huge one down. Brian Lowen brilliantly taken. Wonderful stuff by Brian Lowen. Linking up with his brother Frank. And Frank outside here to the wings towards Andrew Quinn. Speculately lobbed in here. Should be the goalkeeper's and is. David O'Sullivan tripped just in front of him, back on his feet once again here to wallop it away downfield. Possession now vital. No goals in the game so far. If there is one, you feel it would be crucial. Here's Neil Ronan, force wide once again. Still Ronan trying to take on Jerry O'Grady. Here's a good chance. Hoops brilliantly by O'Grady, right on the baseline. Again, it's uh, Cork trying to pressurise. Comes back here this time to Jerry O'Connor. And Jerry O'Connor, cool as you like. There was a chop down. The referee has blown his whistle. There was a chop down as that uh, play was developing. And it's got to be a free downfield for free Clare. Clare. Yes. That's a crucial decision. I mean, a great defensive play again by Clare, and particularly Jordy O'Grady there. When Cork were, Neil Rona had rounded him. I mean, a great interception, I mean, because I think he had ball on his mind. Well, Cork had a couple of goal chances, but as you say, that is a crucial decision now by referee Dickie Murphy. Just when Cork would have felt that they were in for a point and that it should have been 15 all. Yeah, to be He'll interested be if they see that one again. Well, the referee saw a chop down. Hard to see it from here, I have to say. Free out to Clare. Davy Fitzgerald. Four and a half minutes of the 70 to play. Batted out there this time by Mulcahy, out into the centre to Tom Kenny. Again, Cork mounting another attack, only one point adrift. It's Jerry O'Connor once more, rounding Colin Lynch, looking for support. Again, they go with a short hand passing movement, aware of the positioning there of Andrew Quinn. This time it's Mulcahy, not a noted scorer. He's back normally in the full back line, centre half when he plays with uh, Newton Chandram. He's put it wide. The wides mount up. That's a total of eight wides for Cork. Anthony Daly now just minutes away from engineering a victory over the Munster and the All-Ireland champions. It's still possible for both of these teams. Cork are about to make another change and about to bring in Jonathan O'Callaghan. Who will he come in for? Just a few minutes to play. Once again, the ball forward there by Kieran Murphy. Held by Neil Ronan. A threat for any one of the Clare markers. Jerry O'Grady nearest to him. Ronan feeding it beautifully into the other Kieran Murphy. Awkward angle, miss hit completely. It's gone wide, and Clare still hang on by their fingertips to a one-point advantage in the Guinness All-Ireland Hurling semi-final. It's Kieran Murphy from Sarsfields who's going off. And the man who's going to come on is Jonathan O'Callaghan. Yeah, what a chance for Pierre Murphy there to equalise. I mean, it's a point. He should have, it's certainly, it's an opportunity that he should have taken. And uh, whether he was going for a goal or not, but I mean, certainly a point is on. Davy Fitzgerald ready to launch this one. Giving it everything he has. Pressure on Sean O'Gohalpine, the court captain, keeping it along the ground here. Once again, it is it's Jerry O'Connor this time, one of the twins. Quick look up to see where's the support coming from. It's Niall McCarthy trying to cut inside, looking for the equaliser. He's got it! Level for the fourth time, and Niall McCarthy answers his critics with his first point of the semi-final match. 
and it's 15 points for Clare, 15 points for Cork. Niall McCarthy ties it up at Grove Park. Cork haven't led in this game since the 20th minute, a long, long time ago. A draw yesterday in football, a draw right now in hurling. Who's going to win it? John Gardner taking it down, showing steely determination, crossing the 65-metre line. Hand passing it ahead here towards Jonathan O'Callaghan. Just in, miss hit, runs all the way through. Controlled by the goalkeeper with difficulty. David Fitzgerald, pressurised by Neil Rowland. Still manages to get a clearance in. Out into the centre. Tony Griffin's moved out there into the centre. Well, now, who's got the necessary wherewithal to finish off this match? Niall Gilligan was hooked. Jerry O'Connor takes it. Couldn't quite control it, however. They try to get the ball up, Clare. Again, stalemate in the centre. Heading into the last minute of the 70. Cork come forward, and Cork lead! And it is Jerry O'Connor! The guard based at Anglesey Street, in the centre of Cork, has put Cork in front with his second point of the match in the very last minute of the 70. Yeah, and I mean, that's been a crucial, crucial... Uh, Ball by Tom Kenny to win there. Three or four players are on that the ball broke to Tom Kenny. He comes in and breaks and gives the hand pass to Jory O'Connor. And Jory has played brilliant stuff there in the last 10 15 minutes. Breaking ball around the middle of the field. He's been fantastic. There'll be two extra minutes. Two and a half minutes so to play. Are, Cor are Claire to be denied? That would be a real heartbreak for them considering what they have given us for the 70 minutes so far we've witnessed. They've been every bit as good as Cork, but that business about sustaining it for 70 minutes, that is the crucial thing, plus the number of subs that Cork have been able to bring on, subs of real quality. No doubt about that, I mean, Cork were in the needle's greatest, they've reacted and they've made the changes, and uh, the biggest one, I think, has been putting John Garner into centre-back, I mean, that has been a crucial move by the Cork selectors, and uh, certainly if they're to go on to win this, one, this match, I mean, I think that's the move that has won them again, but, I mean, it's early days yet, I mean, we saw a draw yesterday, who's betting that it won't be a draw today? Is there a clear response? Remember, they took the lead in the 21st minute of the match. They've now just lost it in the 69th. It's 16 to 15. Jerry O'Grady put under pressure by Ronan and by Dean. Who's to reach the final? The referee's whistle has sounded. Clare are in a hurry. They want to take the free quickly. They'd have been happier if they'd won possession of the centre of the field just to challenge Cork a bit more down the other end. Davy Fitzgerald, no more determined man wearing the colours of Clare. You'd say this maybe is the last chance for, for Clare to get the equaliser. This is the end of the first minute. There'll be another after this. Cork, go up for it. And it's the man who's put them in front. Jerry O'Connor has got it. Brian Lawn challenged by Joe Dean. It breaks out here. Neil Ronan chasing after it with Jerry O'Grady. We're inside the last 50 seconds at this stage. 16 to Cork, 15 to Clare. Referee going to throw the ball up. Possession now is absolutely crucial. Cork need to retain it and force the game towards the Clare goal. Clare have to get the ball. Anthony Daly knows that. Keon O'Connor is being prepared to come in. That might just waste off a second or two. He's not on just yet. 20 seconds to go. It's Jerry O'Grady who's taken it out there towards Colin Lynch. He's missed a lot. Can he get away from Jerry O'Connor? It's Colin Lynch leading the charge of the banner. They're behind by a point. Great defensive work by Cork. Griffin outside to Lynch. There might be one last chance for Colin Lynch here. It's awkward, it's going right, and it's gone wide. Yeah, and I think that was the chance, sure, of whether Dickey puts on another bit for maybe the injuries there. Um, certainly you would think that that was maybe the last chance that Clare had. And he knows it. 16-15. The two minutes of stoppage time has been played. Cork, the Munster, the All-Ireland champions from 2004, are just seconds away from next month's final. Towards Brian Lowen and Joe Dean. It's gone forward here to Kieran Murphy. There's a chance to tie it up completely. 
and a great save by David Fitzgerald from Neil Ronan. They're still playing away there, playing their hearts out. Niall McCarty trying to get the ball up. It doesn't matter anymore because Cork have won. Cork have beaten Clare in as titanic a clash as you could wish to see in Croke Park in the Guinness All-Ireland Hurling semi-final. Full credit to both teams. It's a shame there had to be a loser today because just like yesterday, nobody deserves to go home broken-hearted. And Clare are right now, and Davy Fitzgerald is furious. Clare are downhearted. Dr. Con Murphy going in there to sympathise with Colin Lynch. John Allen and his selectors made the hard, the tough calls. They brought John Gardner into centre-half back. They were up against a Clare team who were leading them since the 21st minute of the match. Diodonolo Kilzak wasn't beaten, nor was Davy Fitzgerald. Both sets of fans will go home feeling they have witnessed a really, really good match. But it's the Cork fans who will have the shorter journey, the happier journey, because with Jerry O'Connor coming to point in the 69th minute, his second point of the match, and before that, Niall McCarthy, who levelled it up with his first, round about the 68th minute mark in the game. And after all of that, it's Cork who get to come back to Croke Park on the second Sunday in September to defend their title against either Kilkenny or Galway. Full-time score here, it's Cork 16 points, Clare 15.